Low trading has closed on 13th of October 2023. As always, we'll do our disclaimer, go over our calls, make some predictions. So my trading plan for Monday, which is October 16th, 2023. Just remember, my calls can be completely wrong. Trade at your own risk. Monday, we're going to be treated to another free presentation by Rod David. Here are the instructions for accessing his website. We'll be doing this Monday, Tuesday. It's not one of these things where they say, give me your credit card and, and uh, you can cancel if you don't like it. It's free. See if his service is for you. Well, this is what we said, these are the patterns we should see next week. And we said, unless we gap down smartly, we should see higher prices regardless of where we close. And we get a target, 43.59.54, and that printed right at the open. So that worked. Now, just because it's the target doesn't mean it has to stick. Doesn't mean you have to close higher. That's why we said, regardless of where you close. During the day, MJT gave a sell signal, but printed the minimum target immediately. It did say this move up wasn't for keeps, was false, but everything is played out. So that's a pretty big drop, but in spite of dropping all day, we closed over all these intraday lows. We even closed over yesterday's low. So dropping all day didn't really accomplish anything. Now that might change it Monday's open. Because so what counts isn't this close when Monday's open. But for right now it's a big drop which couldn't hold on to the lows. It's particularly suspicious you couldn't hold on to the lows on a Friday because when you're dropping like this it's not retail customers who are going to push prices over these lows. It could be that the selling is spent, but this is a pattern which usually closes near its high, and it doesn't close near its high. It should lead to lower prices Monday, even if we don't close lower, and that conflicts with everything else, because dropping and not holding on to the drop is not bad, and particularly when you can't do it on Friday, when retail customers aren't going to fight the trend, it isn't bad at all. So we have mixed signals, and we have to use the mixed signals rules. Well, here's the wave count we have. I'm going to stick with it. You'll notice we traded under this red line, but couldn't close under it. Assuming this is the right count, regardless of what happens Monday, I can't count this wave as being over. It's much too short. So even if we drop Monday, I think we have more to go on the upside. And I think a lot more because this had all the makings of a big low. That doesn't mean we go up Monday though. Let's see what else we have. Well, here's a volume spike. And volume spikes occur in your lows. It's a sign of panic it's selling by retail customers. Now, of course, Monday we could spike higher. And this doesn't have to mark the exact low. When you get spikes like this, usually in terms of time, you're pretty close to a low. Well, we had a wave count with an ABC down. Then we had an ABC up. And now on some degree, we have an A, a B, and we have C equal to A. So, there is a count justifying us rallying from here, even though today was a bearish day. We just have to hold on to this low for this count to work. But if that count's going to work, you have to find some way to count this move down. So let's switch from the 15-minute chart to the 5-minute chart. question is, do we make an ending diagonal triangle? 
Now this isn't the cleanest one I've ever seen, but it doesn't break any rules. This drop here looks like five waves, and ending the diagonal triangle should be three, 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 but you can certainly count it as a three-wave structure. This wave E didn't go under your wave C. It usually does, but it doesn't have to. And this would be in a C wave, and EDTs are usually in wave 5, but it can occur in wave C. And what makes this interesting at the FIPS, if that's A, C is 0.618 times A, E is 0.382 times A, and that's the FIB ratio you want. When you get FIBs like this, it certainly is comparable with and strongly suggests it's all part of the same structure. And if this isn't ending the diagonal triangle, that low should hold. We should rally, and the target is to overcome the origin of the triangle, which is today's high. Doesn't mean it's the right count, of course, but there's an ABC. The fibs all work if this low holds. We use the mixed signals rules. Monday's pattern has yearly low regardless of where we open. Signals are mixed. It is bearish. Today's normally bullish pattern wasn't bullish. And yes, that McClellan an oscillator from the volatility and it's both the given Bollinger Band reversal sell signals. But of course, if there's a strong rally, they'll be invalidated. What is bullish is that the session long decline closed over midday lows and even closed over yesterday's low, meaning the bears made no progress on the downside. The volume spike in futures and there's a legitimate wave count that make it possible, not required, but possible, that we move sharply higher and Monday's open. And if that happens, all those bearish indicators are overcome. They don't mean anything. And if that happens, we're going to erase all of today's drop, most likely before Monday's close. So that's one possibility. If it doesn't happen, we should see lower prices even if we don't close lower. So this has the makings of what could be a big low because of the wave count and the volume spike. All we need to do is hold on to this, move up strongly from the open, and if that happens, we should overcome this high pretty soon. And if it doesn't happen, that's the wrong interpretation and we should trade lower, but that's not a guarantee that we're going to close though. Monday's pattern has the early low. We have to see where we open to see if this plays out. This looks bad, but if that holds, it's not bad at all, just a temporary detour. So we have to see if this holds. We have to see if we gap up strongly in Monday's open. And that's today's call.